Hello sailors, welcome back to North Shields where morale takes a bit of a hit as we install six new hatches. Join us back on board Reach Out as we race against time and tide to get our refit completed before May. Here is hatches, so we've got a few hatches to do as well because um, several of those leak including the great big one um, at the bow in the forepeak um, and I had been um, kind of not well concerned whatever you know I wasn't looking forward to this job because uh, getting the port lights out was an absolute mission but there is a god it would seem because the hatches seem to have been put in with butyl tape and this butyl tape just kind of comes off um, you know like this like putty like balls I think they do normal windows in houses and stuff with this so it's pretty easy to get off it's a it's a lot easier to get off than the silicon adhesive stuff um, and actually, uh, this is this is it is this the big hatch off now. Um, so we've got another one uh, to go in there. But what I would say is that you know, again, these are eye-wateringly expensive items. Uh, this big hatch here was seven hundred and twenty pounds, and that was with a discount as well, um, which we're thankful for. But it's a lot of money for a hatch, um, and with that, you don't get the you don't get an inner. Um, kind of uh, face here for the uh, for the hatch either and you don't get a fly screen and when you look at the prices of those as well you're paying over a hundred quid for a fly screen and a trim for the inside which is just like I mean it's madness so what I've learned is that we need to kind of preserve the inner um, trims that we've got at the moment and hopefully we've got a fly screen otherwise we'll be making one because I'm not paying 70 quid for a honestly if, if these were quality fly screens I, I might consider buying them because they're gonna last a few years and they're gonna do the job but when you get them they're literally like the cheapest assed um, fly screens you can imagine and but there's like a 40 50 60 quid price tag attached to it it just doesn't make any sense you know um, so we'll cross that bridge when we come to it because now these need to be cleaned down in preparation for, uh, for bedding today we are doing the big hatch the big four peak hatch only slight problem the old holes don't match the new holes so Rob is marking on the new frame where we're going to have to uh, drill some new holes and then we're going to have to fill all the old ones. Yeah, the, the plan, I'm a bit nervous about, but the plan is to drill the old holes uh, and then fill that hole with a wooden dowel with a bit of wood glue to then essentially fill that hole um, Oxy over the top of that, gel coat over the top of that, and then just install as, as usual, like, as we don't ordinarily would. I don't know if this is going to work, uh, but we're going to find out. We're going to do it live. <laughs> Let's go. Hi, Fee. Plan's working. One minor, minor hiccup. Nothing happened. <laughs> Nothing happened. One of those days. Oh God, has it? Thank you very much to Stu from Padstow. He's <laughs> not from Padstow. We've met him in Padstow. Padstow Stu. And also the Mike Harvey emergency DIY helpline, which I called earlier on as well. Um, so we've got wooden plugs in here now, all with Gorilla Glue. Um, so that kind of fills up the old hole. Um, then we'll epoxy over the tops of these, and then I'm going to finish it with gel coat because I'm paranoid. 
and I, I don't want this to kind of let in water in the future and it's just the right thing to do I think. Yeah, but that is enough for one day. Oh my god! <laughs> Let's get, uh, well some rain's coming obviously oh. because we're doing hatches so we're gonna put the old ones back in oh. and we're just gonna put some plastic sheeting over the top, masking tape that oh. down. <laughs> Are you okay over there? I've, I've been in the same position for so long that I just... <laughs> oh. It's enough for one day. The next day we headed south of the Tyne to East Coast Fiberglass to stock up on epoxy. So Chico had Chico time and we have epoxy time which is 20, no, 10 past 4 on a Friday afternoon. Um, and we're going to use this to basically create a waterproof seal on the top of our holes in the deck. So let's go. We've been, to, we've been to South Shield Supplies. Never done this before. Three to one though. I can work with that. Let's go. There's the epoxy resin. 60 grams. Now we're going to need... 20 grams of hardener now this is where the shit's gonna happen so now we've got to mix it and mix it and mix it and it'll create an exothermic reaction it'll start to get warm and then time is of the essence so what are we going to mix it with well the only thing we can mix it with at the moment a fish and chip fork and where did you get the fish and chip fork? From the Golden Chippy in uh, Wall's End. Thanks, Kev. What was your official verdict? I thought it was a four. I thought the chips, the chips could have been crispier, but the fish was actually really nice. I think it could have been a little bit fresher if it wanted to get those five stars. It needs to be a bit fresher, but the size of it was lovely, and uh, yeah, the people in there were really nice actually as well. I had a bit of a chat on with them. Four uh, out of five is good. Four out of five is good, man. It's a good chippy. Yeah, it was a good chippy. Anyway, I'm going to mix this for three minutes and I can't make the review of the fish and chips last that long. So, uh, yeah, four out of five. Good recommendation. A few moments later. We need some thickener in here. Uh, it looks like corn flour. It does look like corn flour. Can you get me something to actually use uh, to get it in with, though? Okay. Once the epoxy was in, we nipped to the local for a nice cold pint, or three, and prayed that the epoxy would harden. Our prayers were answered and we were able to cover all the holes for the night. The following morning we started sanding the epoxy flush to the deck. While Rob is uh, sanding down the epoxy, um, which is thankfully set with no issues, uh, I'll just say this job was a lot bigger than we thought it was going to be. Um, we thought compared to the port lights doing the hatches would be a, would be a doddle um, but yeah it, it was not. <laughs> um, the, the last few days we haven't really filmed anything because we've just been, uh, well morale's been a bit up and down. Yesterday we worked really well but because of the wind you can hear it now. We thought the wind was going to be half of what it was yesterday, um, which kind of shows you how crazy it was yesterday. We had to keep hold of everything while we were working because as soon as you put something down, it was almost blowing off the boat. Um, and we do have the big hatch almost in. <laughs> I say almost because there's still we're still having issues with it. Um, it. It didn't really come with any instructions. And from what we read, the big ones are supposed to come disassembled. Uh, ours came assembled, so the first job was having to having to disassemble it because there was no way of actually getting it in there uh, without taking 
taking the lid, the, the top hutch part drill off. Yeah, to drill the holes. Um, the holes which, <laughs> the instructions for drilling the holes were literally just drill the holes. <laughs> Not how wide or how deep or anything like that. Just drill the holes, you'll work it out, you'll be fine. Well, we um, did. We did actually, but it did take a long time. We had to do a lot of more research. If we you're going to put a five mil screw in, drill a four mil hole. Yeah. I didn't know that. I do now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so we've had like six great big holes in the boat for the last uh, couple of days because we were confident. We thought, oh, this will be fine. We'll do it all in one day. No. And then rain keeps coming and we have to keep uh, putting. We've had uh, <laughs> carrier bags underneath and then taping it all down on top and everything. And thankfully, we haven't had much water ingress. But, you know, we, we scheduled this job when it wasn't supposed to rain for a few days and every single one of those days where it wasn't supposed to rain it has it has rained so we're, we're a bit sick of the north shields weather imagine the first croissant <sighs> we might seem in good spirits but we were actually feeling a lot of pressure at this point and it wasn't just the hatches causing it our berth at royal keys comes to an end in just under two weeks and every day we spend beyond that will cost us 50 pound a night this cut-off point is also the Neap Tide, which we need to catch in order to have more options going south along the east coast. Without the Neap Tide, we won't be able to get into a number of marinas and harbours. So at this point, not only are we dealing with having six gaping holes in the coach roof in gale force conditions, we also have no mainsail, no Genoa, and all our power is disconnected, meaning we can't even start the engine. Yeah. <laughs> Weather in the northeast never bothered me until I had a boat. <laughs> now it bothers me. We managed to get most of the hatches on yesterday and the smaller ones were nowhere near as difficult as the big one, but generally speaking this task has, has almost broken our spirit. <laughs> I completely chucked it down last night, so Rob's opening up. We'll go and see if, if, if we got some success. Oh please, 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 please. Leaky port light since the screws have been changed has not leaked. Oh, that's good. So, so do we have like no leaky port lights we've now? We've got no leaky port lights oh at the moment. God. Unless you want some leaky no, port no, lights. No, 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 no. I've had quite <laughs> enough of those. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's water in here though. Oh no. Is that from the big one? No, it's from this small one. Oh. We might need to double up the Buell tape. Ah, but that one hasn't got a frame. The frame like shouldn't make a shouldn't difference. Matter. Yeah. And what about the big one? Leaks. Oh. All is not lost. I mean, we can just tighten the screws. It is supposed to kind of seep down and stuff like that. But we know for a fact that there's a screw not performing as it should on that one. Yeah. Um, so yeah. There's more work to do on that, but it doesn't leak as much as it used to. That's it. It's it's yeah. a bit better. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this one's fine as well. Excellent. Right, one hatch to go. Well, one hatch plus some some repairs. It's currently under a little tent because the epoxy wasn't quite set on some of the uh, the holes that we had to drill, so I had to make a little cardboard <laughs> a little cardboard tent for it and then tape over that. Um, so hopefully it's dry and hopefully the epoxy is set. The epoxy is set, yes! I know I'm whinging about the weather quite a lot but it's going to be gusting 40 again today. Um, which it does make everything more difficult. Like we have to have both of us on deck at all times when we're working because guaranteed the second one of us leaves something will shoot, there'll be a gust and something will shoot off the boat and then one of us will just shout, boat hook! We were fishing, um, fishing Tupperware boxes full of uh, drill bits out of the water yesterday. The cushion went flying towards the end of the day. That went in the water. <laughs> it, was, it was testing us. But today we're going to get the last of the hatches on. They might not all be perfect, but they will be on and we can adjust them over the next few days and few weeks and we will get there. <laughs> we will have beautiful, uncrazed, unleaking hatches. It will be good. Travel sanding complete. We do a little bit of wet sanding. 
descending. Yeah, this is because we made a mess with the epoxy. Uh, that have something to do with the wind? <laughs> it would have something to do with the wind. <laughs> well, it's all to do with the wind, to be honest with you, but what we could have done is masking tape this up, and then at least any of this excess would have gone onto the masking tape rather than onto the deck. Uh, but we've never done this before, so we live and learn. So this hatch is actually the only one that we just filled the holes with epoxy. All the other hatches we used wooden dowels plus epoxy. Um, and yeah, doing the dowels was a little bit of a pain, but I feel like it was quicker overall because with just doing the epoxy, we then had to, it was sort of like seeping and setting overnight and then we had to refill, which sort of took an extra day for that to then set again. Um, so yeah, I think overall the dowel was probably a little bit faster. I think it was, but I think our issue was that the, we, we had so many holes to fill that we had a lot of epoxy work to do and then this was going in quite nicely, it was sinking down but then it needed more and more and more and then the longer the time went the thicker the epoxy got and the more difficult it was to work with, hence the mess. Yeah. So I think if you were dealing with just like one hatch, yeah, I think be. it would be alright. Yeah. You know, I think you could just get away with like filling it full of the same batch of epoxy if you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, but, but either way, you know. And our advice is if you're going to replace all your hatches, maybe, you know, space them out. Do, do one at a time. Don't do, it <laughs> in a, don't, don't do it in a gale. Don't do it in a gale. Don't do it in the northeast of England. <laughs> Put the bloody pen. There it is. The Sharpie. The Sharpie's always going missing. It is. round twice we couldn't film it because we literally needed all four hands to get that on there and to make sure it's, it is in the right place Rob's just going to punch through the tape easier said than done just to make sure that the holes in the frame line up with the holes in the neck we put a little bit of butyl tape around the screwed heads as well sailors so a uh, little change of pace for a second as you know I am extremely fond of a cup of tea <laughs> so so fond of a cup of tea in fact I was wondering how many tea bags I'm gonna need to pack for this voyage um, so rather than just guess I decided to ask the experts so <laughs> while Storm, uh, Storm Kathleen was stopping us from doing any work the other day uh, I decided to email Yorkshire Tea <laughs> So I'll share with you the email that I actually sent them. This is genuinely the email I sent to Yorkshire Tea. Dear esteemed brewmasters at Yorkshire Tea, my name is Faye, I am a sailor and a teaaholic. Right. I am penning you this note from the galley of my sailing yacht in North Shields. Storm Kathleen has blown an absolute hoolie, forcing us to batten our hatches and seek comfort in a warming cup of the good stuff. Last year, we, me, my husband and our trusty terrier sailed 1600 nautical miles around the UK, always accompanied by our trusty Yorkshire tea. Except for, of course, the notorious banger incident of 2023. More on that dark, scary time later. This winter we have spent many a day in the cold boatyard, tea and flasks, to prepare our vessel for an adventure to sunnier shores. In three weeks we will sail south to France, then Spain, Portugal, then to Morocco and beyond. Now I understand the Moroccans make a good cup of tea, but we all know there is no tea like Yorkshire tea. <laughs> and before I leave for five years on the high seas, I must make sure we have provisioned for five years of the high teas. So here's the tea, so to speak. I am looking to calculate the exact number of tea bags I should stow away to avoid any tea-related tragedies, such as the aforementioned <laughs> banger incident of 2023. I'm appealing to your legendary northern wisdom and tea expertise to help me figure this out. How many tea bags would sustain a tea-addicted sailor for such an epic voyage? Now, it's a known fact that shy bends get them out. 
so while I'm here asking for your arithmetic assistance, I might as well come cheekily with cap in hand. Any chance you'd fancy sponsoring us? A few tea leaves for the journey. Our YouTube channel, Sailing Here, might not be the next Hollywood blockbuster, but it's got heart and it's got tea and it's got an adorable Welsh Terrier to top it off. We're talking prime product placement <laughs> with your tea gallantly by our sides, braving the nor notorious North Sea, the arduous Atlantic coast and the strenuous Straits of Gibraltar. I eagerly await your mathematical answer and with a bit of luck, a bountiful tea chest to accompany me on this grand adventure. Until then, I'll be here sipping the last of my stash and dreaming of endless, blue endless brews on the endless blue. Cheers, Faye sailing here. Thanks. <laughs> I actually said that. I will, uh, I will notify you as soon as they reply. <laughs> this is the satisfying bit. Ooh. It's so shiny. If only it didn't leak. <laughs> We will get it completely watertight at some point, maybe when the sun's shining. How nice do these look? Beautiful! I stand corrected, the four peak hatch isn't leaking! <laughs> it must have settled yet. In yet. <laughs> must have settled into the butyl tape. That's fantastic news. Yeah. And behold the beauty of those uncrazed new shiny patches. Love them so much. Five minute job. <laughs> Thanks for joining us again, sailors. Come back next time when we hear back from the brewmasters at Yorkshire Tea. Like, comment, share, and subscribe.